What's going on guys, welcome back to the final season of my LA Kings franchise mode series. This is season number 10. As you can see, they're the Vancouver Canucks in the Stanley Cup last year. They actually beat us in the second round. Had high hopes for this team. I think we've won four of the last President's Trophies. Unfortunately, we're just not getting done in the playoffs. Uh, Canucks actually beat us in seven. So, I mean, they want to win it. I feel like if we get by them there in that seventh game, we win the cup. So literally one game cost us. Uh, we're actually starting this one in the contract re-sign phase as season 10 will not have an off season. It's just going to end basically at the end of the playoffs. So I wanted to make sure this one wasn't too short for you guys. As you can see here, most of our big players are locked up. Kind of crazy actually. We got five players there making 10 million plus. Lucas Raymond is a new deal. Unfortunately, we have nine and a half million in cap space. He wants 11.5. Also, he doesn't want an extension. So um, I'm kind of upset with myself for actually not realizing he needed a new contract as could have traded him for maybe even like a third round pick at the draft just because he is a really good player. So negotiating rights for him, I think, are worth a lot more than, say, your average guy. Uh, Rossi, Bedard locked up. Bedard somehow dropped in rating. Had a pretty solid season, I thought. 73 points there. 23 years old. I mean, I don't know how he drops, but hopefully sometimes it's weird. He'll drop and then he'll get back up the next season. Uh, March 37 on entry-level deal still huge for us. Zeri, I'm thinking, will actually re-sign instead of Raymond. High top six there. Wants to re-sign with us. Played pretty good. If we get him in the second line, could do even better. Um, Paulson, Gleason. Really, outside of Zeri and Raymond, everybody else is kind of a depth um, signing for us. So, I like to do it position by position. Raymond doesn't want the extension. I think we just lose him, so it's unfortunate. We've had him since the first draft, but have to let him go. Connor Zeri wants 5.75 for four years. Uh, one year, 5.5. I mean, we got one year left. We haven't really cheesed yet, but this last year here, I mean, let's do one year, 5 million. We're just going all out here for that 10th season. So many guys actually only need new deals. Savoy, Rossi, Bedard, Marchman, like, uh, year 11 would be tough. Paulson as well. In terms of offense, so Thomas, I'd like to keep as a fourth liner. Should be cheap. Yeah, 800k there for two years. Um, this guy, Reardon, I think has been an AHL, or actually maybe he was just an um, unsigned prospect. 79 overall, low elite, could be like an 80. Um, letting off, I don't think we'll need West Garth Thomas and Beard in there. Would be our fourth line, so I'll just let him go. Um, AHL guys, I'll make sure to sign all the ones we need. Defensively here, so Checker and McCarcel are our top pair. Gleason, Buckley, the second pair. Then we'll have Mason and probably Bjornfoot on the bottom pair. Maybe Gooley if he grows a bit. Uh, Bjornfoot, 800k for two years, I think it's a good deal. Mason, 2041, you better want 2.9 for three. One year there, he wants 2.3, so let's try one year at 2 million. Uh, Zeri says yes, we'd actually have about 2.5 million left, so I don't even think we'd probably sign one, or maybe we'll sign a bomb pair defenseman. Uh, more likely, they'll just have a bit of cap space for, for trades. Uh, and it's Shushkin, 26.77, now medium fringe. Doesn't want an extension, that's fine. I think uh, Leg there can be the AHL starter, we might actually use him in a big trade, um, whether it be offseason, deadline, whatever. Uh, Grebeshko, I don't think it's going to have to be HL backup, though, so we'll have to sign an HL backup. And I think that's really it for like the big name players. So advance the day here. Um, Reardon, I believe the sign's good, so that's awesome. I think it'll be a fourth liner. Um, Bjorn for rejected, wants to test free agency. Kind of sucks. Um, Thomas Lowe accept. Zeri accepted, that's nice. Um, Mason also wants to test free agency, interesting. So Mason, 2041, I guess we'll just qualify because he doesn't want to sign with us. Bjorn for we can let go. Um, again, we can just find a sixth NHL defenseman or hopefully Gooley, Gamble, somebody can make the jump. Also guys, for some reason I thought Thomas already accepted our offer, but apparently he didn't. I uh, gave him like an extra 100k, he said yes. And so we actually have 5 million cap space now, and all we need is like a 6th defenseman. Uh, if I see like a really good young forward or something like that, we could pick him up. But honestly, we just need a 6th defenseman with 5 million, so I wouldn't mind, like I said, um, having a bit of extra cap for, you know, trade deadline or whatever, try and make some huge trade as we have a ton of really good prospects. We could probably make a crazy addition. Obviously, too, it's easier at the trade deadline as as the contracts are prorated or whatever, so just easier to take those on. Elijah Peterson's available, 13.1 million, 93 overall. Uh, unfortunately, a little bit out of our price range. Same goes for Lucas Raymond, who we just lost. Ivanov there, so Drysdale, I wish we would have picked him. I uh, ended up being a lot better than I expected. Eric Carlson, 30 years old, 87 overall, still wants 11 million. Um, so yeah, I mean, our offense is fine. Malkin. 41 years old, 77 overall, AHL potential, still wants 7.4. I know people say, it's based on your last season, he's got 74 points, but AHL potential would say he's going to start to slow down. I mean, look at his stats, like, his passing's not that great. I don't know how he's doing it, to be honest with you. And his potential says he's going to keep getting worse, so I wouldn't trust that. Um, again, I think our offense is good enough. A lot of people are saying, I got to, you know, beef up that defense a bit more. That's what I want to do here. So we have 5 million bucks. Could actually bring back Soderstrom, potentially. Um, who we make that trade with? I'm trying to remember. Ottawa, I guess, wasn't able to re-sign him. 
Gabe Carlson, 82. So 400k there, I guess an 84. Definitely worth it to just try and go after Soderstrom. Um, none of these guys have potential either. They're all over 26. Now, having said that, this Vitanen guy, 82 overall, 4.6 medium elite. Um, maybe you could steal him. All defensive pairings, all power plays, all penalty kills. I feel like he definitely grows into at least an 84. We'll see what a second round pick could get us. All right, guys, so unfortunately, we don't have the picks to get him, but we could actually make a trade with Florida uh, just to pick him up and then sign him. Honestly, it might be better than trying to trade for our picks pack. Also, want to take a look at the goalies here. Wow, Vasilevsky, top goal, 86 overall. Thatcher Demko, Wallstedt to UFA. I don't know why he just like didn't get assigned to a long-term contract ever. Uh, we do need an AHL backup. 2372 Nikars, not bad. Um, I feel like that's a, actually, wow, Hagos there, same age, 76 overall, so just better. Uh, yeah, let's sign him to be our AHL backup. And then I think, yeah, that's sorted by potential. Let's only look if there's any gems in terms of goalies. Skaters, two way, you never know. Um, Holzer, 2067, low elite, that's actually not bad. Oh, wow, same goes for Tatar here, 2066, uh, medium top six. If we can get him for free, that's insane. Um, even phrase there uh, was he 20 years old low top six I mean he turns out to be a great pick and I just noticed there's actually 480 overall players available Anderson Dolan Vorobayev Ratcliffe and Palin all of them have a fourth line role I'm thinking we could sign them all and kind of mix and match on that fourth line just to get the best chemistry possible obviously the guys that don't make it play first line for us in the AHL I actually let go I think of three or four guys that were high 70s as they were now 27 years old so they were done growing and they didn't want to resign with us, they wanted to test free agency, so I was like, whatever. And this works out better. Like, again, gives us more options on the fourth line, helps out the AHL team, because AHL team wasn't going to be as good this year, so um, signing these guys should definitely help. All right, guys, so we're here, I'm offering the Florida Panthers, Ponikarovsky, pretty solid prospect he drafted uh, a couple years ago, second round, 2027, he's a grinder, immediately potential, 65 overall at 19, and a first rounder there in 2030. For Tannen, I see they actually have a ton of cap space. What is that, 30 million? So they could definitely just match any offer sheet we make. Hopefully, though, they're actually willing to trade him, even though it doesn't look like he's on the block. Trade rejected. Value just isn't where it needs to be. Maybe if we add something small here, they'll say yes. Anisimov, 2056, low lead. Just try adding him on, see what they say now. Unfortunately, still rejected. So I think we have to find another option here for defense. So next, you guys trying to get trade the Buffalo Sabres for Ristol Line and $8.2 million salary. Have them retaining 50% there. Solid defenseman, 86 overall, 33 years old. So still not too old. Offering sour here. Um, 19 years old, 51 overall, medium elite. He's actually like the worst of those three medium elites that we got in like back to back to back rounds um, a couple years ago. So value pretty equal. Uh, I think value actually looks pretty spot on. So might actually have to add because we had him retaining 50%. But We'll see what they say here. Trades rejected, uh, not only to retain the salary. So I don't think we have to have them retain that much, but uh, it's got to be pretty close. Yeah, we'll do like 40 there and then maybe add something small on our side. All right, so I'm also going to add Vegetti to this trade. 22, 71, medium top six. Like, he's not that bad. 40%. Um, Come on, Buffalo. There we go. And after seeing a couple days, guys, this phrase prospect accept their offer. Uh, same with the tar. I think he was the best one. Holzer. Waiting to hear back, of course, from a few more guys. Palin accepts, that's awesome. Ratcliffe, Vrobayev, Anderson Dolan's back in the team. So again, just gonna mix and match that fourth line. Hopefully you can get like a plus three chemistry boost. I think that'd be perfect. And the rest of the guys obviously just help out the HL team. And we just got an interesting off here, guys, from the Vegas Golden Knights. Gustafson and a fifth for a third and a fourth. If Gustafson's like, I don't know, 82, it's probably worth it. Oh, he's a 79, never mind. And look at this, the Florida Panthers, after we try to trade the, for their defenseman, just offer sheet one of ours, Alec Mason. He was 24 years old, 81 overall, 3 million for two years. We only have a million bucks. Um, I think I'm just gonna have to take the compensation. Hope we get internal growth. If not though, um, by the start of the fall, I can definitely just wiggle around the cap, probably clear up two million space and make a trade for someone that's 80 plus. Vancouver just traded Anders Bjork in a third round pick for a first. Fenton, who I'm guessing a prospect, and a fifth. And next year, guys, trying to get a big trade to the San Jose Sharks to bring back a familiar face in Dougie Hamilton. One year left there, 6.9 million. Had them retaining 50%. He played really well for us. They just kind of, you know, got out of our price range, got older. Wouldn't mind bringing him back here for one last run of the cup. Offer them Gooley, who he's basically taken over for. 26.79. Uh, also, too, I think it helps out in terms of the salary space, as we're just under there by, what, 8,000 with 50% and trading Gooley. Uh, Tatar here, I think we just signed, but... Uh, 2068 isn't anything insane. If he gets us Hamilton, I'm willing to do it. Values on our side a bit, which is obviously going to help. 50% retained there. See what they say. Trades rejected. Um, they don't want to keep the salary. So um, basically what that means is they will keep the salary, but we have to make it worth their time. 
could also offer them the second round pick. Got back from Florida. Um, let's try doing a third first on top of that, see what they say. There we go. So at the start of the season now, guys, no surprise here. Team stats is still champion. I'll give you a look at the roster. Honestly, I do think we have another chance at the Stanley Cup. We just got to get lucky in that playoff sim. So March went there on the first line with Matthews and Rossi. So Void, Turcotte, and Dark, and plus three on the second line. I actually have our two best players in Turcotte and Savoy on the second line, but the chemistry boost, I think it's worth it. Appleton there playing with Zary and Paulson on the third line. I think it's a very solid third line. And then even there, Reedin, Westgarth, and Sorokin on the fourth line is pretty good. Everybody getting plus one bonus or more. Defensively here, we got Chikrin playing with Makar on the top pair. Wrist line and Gleasing in a plus three, so that's actually a huge trade for us. Makes them 88-89. Uh, Buckley, Hamilton on the bottom pair. No chemistry boost, what are you going to do? I did notice if I went like this, I think, um, Hamilton gets a plus three with Chikrin, but Makar is so much better. I mean, it just makes sense, I think, to play him on that top pair. Askarov there is now an 89. Low elite potential, down from low franchise, but still a pretty good goalie, I'd say. Looking at the special teams here as well, that first pop unit gets a plus three, which is huge. Second one gets zero, but still very solid. Uh, the two four-mans there, just our best players. PK1 gets a plus three. Uh, the three-mans there getting zero. Overall, again, a very, very solid team. Looking at the AHL lineup here, you can see a lot of chemistry boost. As well, we have 480 overall forward that should help the team out a lot. Uh, defensively here, they're not too good. I think we have 178, and after that, it's like high 60s, low 70s, but we'll see what they can do. Uh, goaltending, Hago, 77 is actually over starter there, over leg, is a 76. Uh, quick look at the special teams, the four-man's not too great, power play's okay. The penalty kill, though, is insane, plus five, plus three. Um, even the three-man's actually both getting plus one. So, AHL team, I think, should probably squeak into the playoffs. NHL team, I think, again, we're a contender. And actually, guys, before I start swimming, I made one change to the forward group. Uh, Marshman here, I changed from a center to a left winger, as that's where he's going to be playing mainly. Also made him a power forward opposed to a two-way forward. You can see he's got really good defensive stats there. 90 D awareness, 90 shot block, 91 stick check, but physical as well, really good. 92 aggressiveness, 91 body check, 89 strength, 6'2". So uh, doing that actually allowed me to put Savoy on the first line with Matthews getting a plus three. So it's now the top line that's getting a plus three. Obviously the first line's gonna play a bit more, so I think it makes more sense for that top line to you know get a bit more of a bonus. Turcotte seems to play metal no matter what, so Really not too worried about him. And he's got Bedard and Rossi playing with him, so I feel like this should be okay. And next year, I just want to take a look at the offense, defense, goaltending. 99 offense, 96 defense, 86 goaltending. So yeah, a pretty good team again. I Honestly, it's all going to come down to the playoffs, Sim. And look at this, guys. We are 10-0 here to start the regular season. Not too bad at all. Let's see if we can uh, keep it up here against the Lightning. Another good team. 3-2 win, Winnipeg. Okay, so 11-0 to start the year. Not too bad. And check this out. After winning the Conn Smythe Trophy, Vancouver then trades Brad Marchand to Arizona. But they get back Ryan O'Reilly, who's still an 85 overall. So I like it's a pretty good trade for them, but still a little bit disrespectful, I think. So now at the end of December here, guys, they 26-14-0 record. Kind of surprised we don't have a single OT loss. Also, too, I realized after our amazing start, we've actually basically played 500 hockey as we're 15-14. and 14, So... Not sure what's going on with that. But hopefully the boys can put together another 11 game win streak. Marco Rossi actually, our leading scorer, 46 points, 40 games. Definitely interesting. I mean, obviously the lineup we have and everything was working because we won 11 straight. So I feel like we should at least hold on to it till the deadline. Quick look at the AHL team. Paling, leading scorer, over a point per game. That's good to see. And then were they in a playoff spot? They are right now, so awesome. And look at this, guys. A pretty big trade just went down. Anaheim trading Sam Steele and Bennett to the Colorado Avalanche. In exchange for a couple prospects, eight overall goalie and a first round pick, so not too bad a return. Chicago just got Kane Korschak, a third and a fifth from Vegas in exchange for a second and third and fourth back Carlson. Alex Dean going back to Buffalo along with Gabe Carlson. San Jose gets two first round picks, Lang and Bruner prospects. Hopefully the Sharks aren't really much competition if we do see them in the playoffs again this year. Just beat the Devils 11 to three, that's awesome to see. Currently 41, 15 and one, another win against the Flames. But a week and a half away from the deadline now. Looks to be a pretty minimal trade there. I'm not sure why they're showing us that one. Nick Ehlers going to the Florida Panthers, 86 overall. They get back a first and Vico. I wonder if Vico is medium elite because like, I don't know, Ehlers is a pretty good player there. So some big trades happening. Currently have a 30 point lead on the next best team in the Pacific in the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, we were crushing it this year. Minnesota looks really good as well, 41 and 13. Vegas just shipped out Cody Glass. First round pick in Evans. Campaign in 85 overall goes to New York. Vegas also gets an 85, so looks like a pretty good hockey trade. We actually just lost to Buffalo after putting together, I think, like a six game win streak. And again to Colorado, so that's not good to see. The Wild there have 89 points, we have 91. So as good as we're playing, they're right on our tail. Sam Bennett, um, third round pick, third and a second, basically. Bennett for a second round pick, he'd have to be at least 82. He's an 80, so yeah, I'm gonna say no to that. Um, again, we have a ton of assets the last year. Like we might as well try and do something crazy. and. I don't know, we'll get some superstar here added on for our cup run. 
Rossi still leading score there. 77 points, 63 games. Awesome to see. Like I was saying, we're first in the division by quite a bit. 20 points now, though, opposed to 30. Maybe I did the math wrong. Maybe it was always 20. Um, Wild, they're two points behind us. So currently, President's Trophy winner again. We're on track for it, at least. And I'll see what we can add here at the deadline. So next year, guys, trying to make a big trade to the Carolina Hurricanes. Murata here on the block. Very good player. 26 years old, 88 overall. First line forward. I think he's going to play probably third line for us, how stacked we are. Um, offering up Appleton. He's basically play taking his spot. Four overall higher, also adding Foster, medium elite prospect again last year. Might as well go for it. The value's on our side. We do have them retaining 50%, so hopefully um, everything goes well here. And there we go, Trey accepted. And next year, guys, I'm trying to make a trade the Winnipeg Jets for Erickson Eck. He's actually 80 for overall, only making 2.6 million. Uh, we still have to have them retain 50% just due to how little cap space we have. They actually have a ton of really good players on the block. Veselainen, Connor, uh, sort of there, Morrissey, Mark Scheifele even, like... I guess they're just, you know, trading away everybody. They're 500. They expect to do better. Uh, so Sorokin's here making just under a million. I actually wanted to trade away somebody else, but he's like the highest under a million contract we have. And it's actually the only one that'll let the trade go through. I'm going to try adding Weber here, 1965, unsigned. Value makes it pretty equal. Uh, we do have 50% on Ericsson X. So we have to add a bit more here. Or not. All right. So... Yeah, team's uh, team's looking pretty good. So after the trade deadline, guys, here's an updated look at our team. Honestly, we are even more stacked than before. We got Murata, 88 overall, first line forward on the third line. He's actually got 76 points right now from playing in Carolina, which is only one shy of Rossi, who's our scoring leader, which is kind of nuts. Um, Eric Snack there on the fourth line. I actually changed him over to a left wing and a playmaker. He's actually got better hands than a shot anyway, so I'm not sure why he was a sniper. Uh, plus, he gives us a plus one that way. In terms of special teams, I added Murat to the second unit power play. I think that's it. So, yeah, I mean, our team, we're pretty stacked. And so we're now at the end of the season here, guys, with a 59-22-1 record. I'm definitely a little bit upset. We couldn't get that one more win there to finish with 60. 119 points, though, I think is good for the President's Trophy. So, That'd be our fifth President's Trophy in six years, if it is good for it. Uh, let's see, Wild 112, they were, I think, the closest competitor. Yeah, so we got another President's Trophy. And Turcotte actually finished as the scoring leader. 100 points again, 82 games. I love just seeing that from the captain. Pulling his weight, I mean, obviously brought in a couple of guys, and maybe that fired him up to play even better. I actually do want to see. Turcotte's last three years, I think, were the best by far. Yeah, 100 this year, 105 before that. Or actually, he had a couple, 90, 90, 92, but... The last two for sure. I mean, the guy's just been playing incredible for us. Rossi, 96. I think that's his best year yet. Matthews, 94. Murata, 91. So he's continued to play well with us. Savoy, 90. Bedard, 88. I don't know how he dropped in rating from that. Uh, McCarr, 88. Over a point per game as a D-man. 75 assists is unreal. Marchment, 84. Okay, so our team, how many is that? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight players had over a point per game. I mean, five players, 90 plus points. Just ridiculous. Paulson then 66, Zeri 55, Chicken at 50 as a D man, wrist line 44. This team is just so, so stacked. Goaltending wise, Ascara 51, 18, and 1. Three shoutouts, only a 0.89. So having less than a 0.9 is a bit concerning. Uh, 2.84 goals against. I don't really see him winning the Vezina again this year, although he did play a ton of games at 71. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe just because he's such higher rated than Joseph Wool. But yeah, I can't believe that. What is it? Eight guys, I said, 80 plus points, or eight guys over a point per game, however you want to look at it. Just incredible. AHL team, uh, Paling did pretty good for us, 72 points over a point per game. Uh, Anderson Dolan, Radcliffe, Thomas. So, yeah, the guys who brought in to help out the AHL team looks to have looked to have done that. I actually have to go and check uh, where they finished in terms of the standings. Entire league here, Barkov, 112. Denis Sanko, 110. So that Florida line was crushing it. Lambert, Gensel. Turcotte finished uh, fifth in scoring. That's awesome. Caprizov right behind him. Point. Crosby getting it done at 41 years old. He's on the Bruins. Still an 87 overall. I mean, obviously he had a short stint with us. What was it? Uh, one year there. But over a point per game. Really can't complain about you know the time he had with us. I can't believe you know he's still doing it. I wonder if this is the year. Calls it quits. 41 years old. Maybe we'll meet the Bruins in the Stanley Cup Finals. So... Won the President's Trophy again, like I said, fifth time in six years. Awesome to see that. Seven teams there, 100 plus points. See if anyone kind of got. Ooh, I think, yeah, Vancouver squeaks in as 19, so kind of slimy there. Last place, I, I haven't seen Detroit. Oh no, St. Louis. Okay, I just missed Detroit. St. Louis Blues, 64 points. Um, AHL team here, check that quick. Wow, okay, so we won the division. It's weird though, because like the different games played. Yeah, so we're second. Uh, I'm kind of curious, goals four here. Like we had to be, yeah, okay. I was gonna say eight guys over point per game. We had 373. The next closest is Anaheim at 282. 
We almost outscored the next best scoring team by 100 goals. It's, I think it was that 91 to be exact. Um, that is just ridiculous. Goals against, it doesn't look to be the best, but uh, we're not terrible either. We're actually, we're second. Goals against 247. So, yeah, the best team in goals for by far, almost the best in terms of goals against. We better win that Stanley Cup. And look at this, guys. In the first round of the playoffs, we actually have a rematch here against the Vancouver Canucks. So the good thing is, Peterson we saw left in free agency. I'm actually not sure who he signed with, but um, don't really care. I'm just glad he's not on the Canucks. Uh, defensively, though, they still have Hughes. You'll leave you on that top pair. I think they actually lost a bit of depth. Tarasov, 82. I believe last time they had 282. Back of goalie, a little bit worse, but the big thing, of course, is just no Peterson. Uh, he went to free agency. He got paid, so I apologize to Canucks fans. You probably didn't want to see that, but obviously that's a good sign for us. Hopefully we can get a revenge here against these Vancouver Canucks who actually won the Stanley Cup, so I'm really surprised uh, Peterson wouldn't stay with them, but I don't know. For whatever reason, I guess he wanted to get paid. 7-2 win first game, 8-1 win second game. Definitive wins. These boys, they haven't forgotten last year's playoffs. 4-3 win. Keep rolling here. Let's sweep these guys. 5-4 win. There we go. And we got another classic matchup here, guys. San Jose Sharks. Of course, we met with them in the first round of the playoffs last year, then the Canucks second. So it's just kind of reversed here. I think the first line's the exact same. Pashanak, I don't know. I want to say he was like a 91. Now he's a 92. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, they got a solid top nine. A 69 on the fourth line. I mean, we should definitely be able to exploit that. Just, you know, throw everything at him. Defensively, they have Merkley and nothing else. I mean, half their defense there is under 80. Goaltending wise, 82 primos, okay. 81 backup, but I mean, Noah Skarov is an elite goalie. Basically, they're going to rely on Pasternak and Merkley heavily. Bedard there, 7 points in 4 games, playing really good so far in that first round. I mean, all throughout the lineup. Like, it's not even close. I actually totally forgot to uh, check our offense, defense, goaltending, uh, how they matched up against the Canucks. I'm pretty sure we'd be higher in all three categories. Sharks, we have 100 offense, so 8 higher. 8 higher defense, and then 5 higher goaltending. So, hopefully. This is our time. We can move on to the conference final here. Again, another good Pacific Division rivalry. First two games at home in LA. 7-1 win. 7-3 loss. Wow. I don't know how we could have turned around a 7-1 win and a 7-3 loss. 3-2 OT win. 4-3 loss. 2-2 series. We got to come back, play well at home in game 5. 2-1 OT win. That's huge. Just got to win one of the next two. Oh, come on, boys. What are you doing, K? Game 7 at home in LA. The rivalry. Uh, SoCal versus no North Cal. I'm not sure what the nicknames are. Here we go. 1-1. One, one. Murata for us. He's the trade deadline pickup. Biaka Buka. I hope I said that right. 1-1 um, one, one for them. But, oh my god. I just noticed too. First period, we outshot them 16-4. to four. That's quadruple the shots. 2-1 um, for them now. And we're leading by 11. So not quite as much of a lead. But are you kidding me? Our whole, our whole franchise series is on the line right now. One period to go down one of the Sharks. Um, doubling their shots, essentially. Come on. Someone has to be a hero here. Someone has to step up. We need this. Game 7. Force OT. Let's go, boys. Come on. Find a way. <laughs> and that's all she wrote. 2-1 loss to the Sharks. The team we beat last year in the first round. I'm pretty sure handedly. Take us out in seven games. I mean, two of our three wins were in OT as well. So we were based, barely hanging on against these Sharks. I don't know how that happens. And the playoffs have ended. Columbus Blue Jackets are Stanley Cup champs. Calder Cup champs there. Chicago Wolves. I actually forgot to check um, how our AHL team did. Franchise mode, it says, is now complete. So the AHL team looks to have lost in the second round. Um, or no, that's the first round. Wow, yeah, they lost to uh, Tucson there in five games. So, unfortunately, only won one Stanley Cup. I really thought this year was our year. Uh, good thing, too, because, like, obviously we knew it was going to end after 10 years. I think I had, like, eight guys that were about to get re-signed. Turk got there, 14 points in 11 games. So, again, the captain stepped up. I feel bad for him, but, like, at least it's good. We got that one Stanley Cup. You know, it would have sucked if we didn't get one. That Detroit franchise, I think, will haunt me forever, especially being with my favorite team. So, uh, the Sharks actually go on to lose the Wild there in five. Columbus beat Capitals in five, Penguins in five, Panthers in seven, Wild in six. I, I just don't know. I don't know how this team can't perform better than they did. Um, like, look at that, guys. Again, five of six, and that's what we remember. Like, we might even want another one. Like, it might be six of seven. I don't know. Just absolute domination through the regular season. Unfortunately, 
couldn't make it happen in the playoffs. Like, we only made one Stanley Cup, so I'm just super glad we actually won the one we made. Um, Art Ross, there we know, went to Barkov. You also got the Hart. Car got the James Norris again. That's, that's awesome to see. Two of the last three years. Crosby, Lady Bing, we mentioned him. Dude's still playing well at 41. I, I don't think it actually shows retired players because it just said franchise complete. So I am really curious, you know, whether or not I would have called it quits here. Color there, Pateni on Arizona. Dubois got the Con Smythe. I'm a big fan of Dubois. I met him in real life. Cool guy. Uh, Spencer Knight actually on the Columbus now. Won the Vesna. I knew Askarov didn't have quite the year. William Jennings went to Primo. I forgot actually. Sharks were the one team. Lower goals against than us. Uh, Carlo there, Bill Master. And I actually thought about trading for Carlo instead of Dougie Hamilton. I wanted to bring back that familiar face, try to win a cup with them. Ducks coach there, Jack Adams. Horvat, Selkie, so he stepped up with Peterson gone. Ted Lindsay also goes to Barkov. And then Lambert, Mauricio Shard Trophy. So we did get a couple. He got the President's Trophy. He got the Norris. I'll check AHL stats here. So I, I think we won, won our division. Or at least I thought we did. Okay, I guess we didn't win our division. It must have been close, though. Um, in terms of AHL player awards, no AHL player awards. So... Like I said, guys, that's all she wrote for the LA Kings franchise mode series. I mean, you can only do so much with the playoffs, Sim. I think we built a good enough team over the past seven years to win that cup. I mean, again, five presence trophies in the last six years. The one year we did, we missed, we won the cup. There might be another one I'm forgetting about. After that three-year rebuild, we were just probably the most dominant team in the NHL for whatever reason. Just couldn't make it happen in the playoffs. So what are you going to do? Hopefully you guys enjoyed this series as a whole. If you did, leave that thumbs up. I got a ton of more franchise stuff planned. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to do another series before NHL 21 comes out. Maybe. Um, I'll, I'll, you'll have to wait and see. But thank you guys so much for the support on this one. It means a ton to me. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day.